Hi, David. Nice to see you again. Are you ready to continue? David, I don't quite know how to tell you this, but we're going to talk about fumes and gases, and I'm afraid your outfit, while quite charming, isn't going to be much use against those. Let's begin. Arc welding fumes contain small particles from the consumables, base metal, and any base metal coating. Arc welding gases come from the shielding gases used in certain welding processes, like shielded metal arc welding, or SMAW, and gas metal arc welding, known as MIG or GMAW. Gases can also be formed from the flux during welding. You can go to lincolnelectric.com to view a list of the potential respiratory problems and other health hazards associated. David, really? This is serious. O okay, sure, technically, if you were welding underwater, you might wear a scuba outfit, but that's not the typical way you would protect yourself from fumes and gases. Please, take that off. The information about hazards contained in warning labels can change periodically, so it's a good idea to keep up to date. You don't want to be late to the party, David, do you? David? Are you there? No, there's no party, David. I just said you don't want to be late to the party. It's a metaphor. Oh, heavens. David, do you know what an SDS is? It stands for Safety Data Sheet, and there is an SDS for every Lincoln Electric consumable welding product. You should review the SDS for every product you use so you know what you're being exposed to. The SDS contains important information about the compounds used to manufacture the product, fire and explosion hazard data, health hazard data, reactivity data, and information on the precautions to use for the safe handling and use of the product. Don't worry, David. The SDS for any Lincoln Electric product can be obtained by your employer by using the QR code on the package, or found at www.lincolnelectric.com SDS. This online version contains the most up-to-date product information, so even if you have the paper version, be sure to check online from time to time. David, are you surfing the web? Come on, we're not done with this chapter yet. In addition to reading warning labels, you must always inspect your welding environment and conditions. Make sure you have the proper ventilation, which we'll discuss in the next chapter, and know the composition of the base metal as well as any painting, plating, or other coating. The first and easiest way to do this is to obtain the SDS for the base metal you'll be working with and remove any paint, plating, or other coating. If you can't obtain the SDS or don't know what's in the coating and cannot remove it, it's time to call on science. David! That's not... Please don't do that. This is Dr. Science. Dr. Science? Really? That's what we're going to call this guy? Anyway, have the base metal evaluated and the fumes sampled and analyzed by an industrial hygienist to determine what compounds are in the fumes and to measure the amount of exposure to those compounds. No, doctor, you're fine. David thought we were having a party. Uh, I, I never mind. We'll talk more in the next chapter about how an industrial hygienist works. You see, David, it's all about exposure. There are guidelines for how much exposure to potentially hazardous chemicals is acceptable. In the US, OSHA has created the Permissible Exposure Limit, or PEL, and ACGIH has created the Threshold Limit Values, or TLV. This information can be found on the SDS, and keeping your exposure below these numbers will keep you safe. The first and most basic rule is to keep your head out of the plume created by your welding. This may seem obvious, but failure to do so is a common cause of overexposure to welding fumes. This is George. George is an alligator. Imagine George's head is the plume from your welding. Never stick your head in the alligator's mouth. Okay, George, let go. I think he's learned his lesson. Keep your head out of the plume, right, David? Furthermore, you must always ensure proper ventilation. The major types of ventilation are as follows. The first is natural ventilation. If you're outdoors, this would be wind.
Indoors, this would be windows and doors. The second type is mechanical ventilation. This would be fans. Finally, local exhaust sucks the fumes and gases away right at the source of welding. Local exhaust can be provided by any of the following. Fume extraction guns, fixed enclosures, downdraft tables, or booths with exhaust hoods, adjustable elephant trunk exhaust systems. There are many ways to position an elephant trunk exhaust system and it depends on your welding conditions and setup as well as the angle of your weld and your position relative to the work. Determining which type of ventilation is right for a particular welding job is based on the following factors. First, the size and configuration of the welding space you're working in. Next, the number of welders in the space, welding process and current, the consumables used and the material being welded, including paint or plating. And finally, the PEL and TLV exposure limits, which can be found on the SDS. When adequate ventilation can't be provided, you'll need to wear a NIOSH-approved respirator. Don't worry, David. You aren't expected to be able to figure all this out on your own. This is where Dr. Science comes in. Nice of you to join us, Dr. Science. No, Dr. Science, most stylists and manners gurus believe you can never be overdressed. But that's a topic for another set of videos. Let's continue with this video. Whenever you're working with potentially hazardous compounds, an industrial hygienist should sample, measure, and analyze the compounds you're being exposed to while you are welding. Now, David, this is all very official and should make you feel quite safe. But remember, Use your common sense and trust your body. If the air you're breathing is not clear, if your breathing air is not comfortable, or you're starting to feel crappy, you may be overexposed. Stop welding and get fresh air. Let your coworkers and supervisor know what's going on. And if symptoms persist, see a doctor. A real Dr. David. Sorry, Dr. Science. Industrial hygienists are respected professional scientists, but they're not medical doctors. And I said this, before, I didn't think this was the best name for him. It, it, it's For one thing, it's not creative. It, it doesn't come off the tongue very nicely, and the people watching this lovely video you're putting together are gonna notice that it's it's poor craftsmanship, really, is what you're talking about here. And you're talking to craftsmen, to, to the welders. They're not gonna appreciate this.